Hi, my name is Roy Kaff and I'm an instructor here at Delphi and today I'm going to talk about doing some decorative soldering technique. Before we get started, let's cover some safety issues. One of the first things, whenever you're soldering, you want to wear a pair of uh, safety glasses. The other thing is, if you want to work in a well-ventilated area, if you are in a small room or like an apartment or something, you probably want to get something like a smoke absorber. This is made by Hako. It's uh, great for getting the fumes out of the air while you're soldering. We're going to be working with a couple of different types of solders today. Probably the most uh, typical type is a 60-40 solder, which is 60% tin, 40% lead. I mean, one of the nice advantages to this type of a solder is that it's really nice and smooth when you're soldering. So when we're doing decorative soldering, sometimes that's not actually the best thing that we want to do is to have real smooth seams. So what we're going to work with mainly today is another type of solder. It's a 63-37, so 63% tin. 37% lead. Now this particular mixture of solder, the melting point and, and where it sets up are almost the same. So it doesn't stay fluid or liquid very long and so if we're trying to do decorative soldering uh, with the soldering iron tips, they, it has a tendency to stay better that way instead of flowing and getting all smooth like normal solder does. I'm, I have a couple of different soldering irons here that we're going to be working with uh, just to show you that you can really do decorative soldering with almost any type of iron. This one I'm using here is a 100 watt soldering iron. It's temperature controlled, so all we have to do is plug in the iron and it stays at a very constant temperature. I'll show you that one in just a minute. Here's another type of soldering iron. This one, you need to plug it into a rheostat so that you can control the temperature. Um, and the advantage to this one then is, you know, if we need to work a little bit cooler, which sometimes you need to when doing decorative soldering, we can just dial down the power and the iron doesn't run as hot. I'm going to be doing some techniques with that one. one is, I am certainly not an expert on, on doing decorative soldering, but uh, what I was hoping to show you is just some easy techniques I think anyone can probably learn. But if you're interested in learning more about uh, decorative soldering, we have this great book here by K. Bain Wiener. So I've got this panel you can see here. I've already soldered it. It does help when you're doing decorative soldering to start with solder on your piece. I think it goes a little uh, easier that way. Um, you don't need to be so critical about how smooth and nice the solder seams are at this point, but we want to get some solder on there because it does make it a little easier. Then another thing that's really um, important when we're doing decorative soldering is to make sure your soldering iron is, tips are really nice and clean. So one of the things that I have here on the table is what's called a tinning block or sometimes it's referred to as a sal ammoniac block. And what this is for is for cleaning the tips of your soldering irons. If you're ever working and you see the tips start to get dark in color, um, they, they'll turn kind of black or they're not shiny, that means they're dirty and you need to clean them off. It works pretty simple. What I'm going to do is just take a little bit of solder, add it to the tip, and then just rub it on this block. And what happens is uh, it burns off all of the um, any uh, gunk or residue that might be on there, and it uh, retins the tip is technically what's going on here. You'll notice that um, this particular iron has a really small tip to it, and um, sometimes a smaller tip is a little bit uh, more advantageous when you're doing decorative soldering. And I'm going to show you one technique here that um, that a small tip really helps out. One of the techniques we're going to use here is called a, the dot method. And a dot method is a real simple technique and involves just grabbing some solder. And what I'm going to do is just come in and put a little dot on here. And so part of it is just every so often and it's you're just going to space it out. I'm just going to put a little dot. Of one of the things about this technique is you can, you know, vary the size of the dots or the spacing on the dots. It's really just, you know, whatever you feel like doing. By adding more solder or working with a larger tip, you'll get a bigger glob on here. You know, if you're looking for something small and delicate, that's where these um, soldering irons with a small tip really comes in handy. Another technique um, is to do something that we call a dot and a dash, which involves coming back through and melting through in between the dots. And what this will do is flatten out the solder seam. And again, just kind of accentuates the difference between the dots and the and what we're looking for there is a little flatter uh, sort of uh, solder bead. I'm going to do something that is sometimes called kind of a swirl technique. We're working with the 6337. The solder seems to react a little bit better. So um, I'm going to make sure that my iron is nice and cool. I'm going to wipe it off the tip off to cool it down. I'm going to come in and I'm just putting these little tiny uh, little marks kind of in the solder. Now, uh, some you know, the goal for most people that do soldering is you're trying to make your solder seams look as smooth and as you can possibly make them. Um, but so decorative soldering, one of the advantages to decorative soldering is that it can disguise 
uh, any sort of mistakes that you might make in soldering. If you come in, a lot of times this will just adds a little more interest to your piece. So I'm going to show you a couple of real quick and easy decorative soldering techniques to do on a three-dimensional box. This one I've made up, it consists all of bevels. And so um, the seams really, uh, especially these corner seams, need to be soldered at a 45 degree angle. So I'm using these wedges to kind of help hold it in place for me so I can come on here and get this. I've already gone in and in most of the seams I've... Um, I've already put down a bead of solder because, again, starting out with some solder on it, I think, makes it a little bit easier. I'm going to use a, a soldering iron with a little bit bigger tip for this technique. And the main reason why is larger tips um, hold more heat. And sometimes, again, that's a good thing. You know, sometimes we need a lot of heat in a spot for what we're trying to do. So I'm going to come in and I'm just going to add a little bit more solder to this particular seam to try to get this to... Uh, to, uh, just so it rounds up a little bit more and I've got a little bit more solder to work with. I'm going to remember to keep my tip clean so periodically I'm going to be wiping it on a damp sponge to, to keep the tip clean. This is a, um, a hammered technique. It involves using just the tip of the soldering iron and what I'm going to do is come in and just tap on to the solder. Wherever the iron hits it's going to melt the solder a little bit. If you remember I'm using a, a solder that sets up quickly so it won't smooth out hopefully too much and we're going to get this kind of hammered or sometimes it's referred to as kind of a pebbled look and uh, I was saying for me I know that one of the nice things about it is a great way of disguising if your solder isn't so good. You can add to this design if you want to add to it. So I'll actually just put a little solder ball on here just to add a little bit of um, more interest to it. So if you get tired of just always doing the hammered look you can come in and do this um, and all I'm doing is just melting a little bit of solder on my soldering iron tip and then I just touch the tip quickly to the seam and then just get out of there and then with that you get these little solder balls that kind of just stay on there. I'll show you another uh, quick and easy technique and again I'm using a soldering iron with a little bit larger tip. Uh, you could use either soldering iron. I kind of like using this one because I want a little extra heat for what I'm doing. This is probably uh, the easiest technique that I'm going to show you. This one involves, you want to get a nice rounded bead of solder. So, you know, it doesn't hurt to have too much or extra solder on here because it'll help us out. I'm going to just use a sponge. So this is a uh, cellulose type of sponge. You don't want to use a synthetic sponge, right? But you want one of these that have like the different size kind of holes in them. I'm going to get it really nice and wet. So, uh, so you can see that it's just holding a whole bunch of water. I'm going to come in here, uh, melt this, and every so often, I'm going to just touch the sponge down on where the solder, uh, right behind the soldering iron. And this puts a real sort of a random, uh, organic looking sort of texture on your solder. 